Submersible Pumps When sizing a pump for private water supply, the daily water requirement per person is 60 U.S. gallons. This deep well is not to scale. Its depth is 225 feet. This water source must be at least 50 feet or 15 meters away from the septic field. Submersible pumps have stages of impellers. Each stage produces approximately 9 psi. This is an example of a typical multi-stage centrifugal pump. It's classified as a variable displacement pump. The diameter of the impeller creates the amount of pressure it will produce. The width of the impeller creates how much flow it will produce. A three to four bedroom house would require a well yield of 15 to 17 gallons per minute, that's U.S. gallons, from this pump. This vertical check valve relieves the impellers from excessive static head pressure. It also keeps the drop pipe full of water. Typically, there is already an inline check valve inside the top of the submersible pump. This is an aquifer of water. When the pump is pumping water, it delivers or it develops a drawdown, which is the distance in feet or meters that the aquifer of water lowers. The submersible pump has to be installed in the pumping aquifer below the drawdown level. This is a torque arrestor, which is installed just above the pump. It centers the drop pipe and protects the wires from wearing against the well casing. Torque arresters should be installed every 20 feet. Check valves should be installed every 200 feet to relieve excessive head pressure on the impellers of the pump. This is a pitless adapter, which is basically an easy quick connect or disconnect. This enables you to pull the pump out via the snare pipe and wire A, as illustrated on the top. This is installed below the frost level, usually around 8 to 10 foot in depth. This is a 4 inch well casing. The well cap can be removed in order to remove the pump. There is a wire attached to the pitless adapter that when pulled will detach the drop pipe from the horizontal pipe feeding the house. This is the top of the casing. It has a 1 8 inch hole to help purge any gases that might be trapped below in the well casing. This is series 160 polyethylene pipe, typically used on well systems. It is rated for only 130 degrees Fahrenheit and comes in 1 to 300 foot rolls, so it is perfect for underground services. Now we will go into the mechanical room and follow the polyethylene pipe which is double clamped to the main valve. A check valve is installed in the system to protect the series polyethylene 160 service pipe. A pressure switch is installed. This pressure switch is typically set at 30 to 50 psi. If you want to adjust the pressure switch, go to the big spring, which is the cutting spring, turn the range nut on the big spring down for higher cutting pressure or up for lower cutting pressure. Adjust the small spring or the cutout switch by turning the differential nut on the small spring down for high cutout pressure or up for lower cutout pressure. A pressure relief valve is installed to protect the diaphragm tank. The pressure relief valve is usually set at 10 psi above the cutout pressure. A hose bib is also installed to test water and purge the system. 
The pressure gauge is at 50 psi, which is the maximum pressure this system is set at. If you look at the picture below, this is a pic of the tank T used to accommodate the pressure gauge, pressure switch, hose whip, and pressure relief valve all in one as illustrated in our shop. The diaphragm pressure tank is pre-charged with air from 3 to 5 psi below the cutting pressure of the pressure switch. This hot water tank pressure temperature pressure relief valve may blow off as a check valve has been installed in the system to prevent the polyethylene series 160 service clamp from weakening. Now that this is a closed system, an expansion tank has been installed to prevent the temperature pressure relief valve from blowing off. Let's go to the electrical. This is the main power disconnect switch. A 240 volt circuit is the best service as the current flow or amperage is half as great with 240 volts as it is with 120 volts. This allows the motor to run cooler, smaller wire is required, and the motor will start up quicker. The circuit box or disconnect switch is wired to the pressure switch, which is in turn wired to the control box. So let's follow that wire up to the control box. The control box relays the signal from the pressure switch to activate or deactivate the pump. Now let's follow this wire down the conduit underground. There is a 240 volt wiring in this electrical conduit feeding the submersible pump from the house. And we'll follow that conduit up to the top of the well casing. As you can see here, as it goes up, this wiring is fed back into the well casing and down to the pump. There are three wires, yellow, black, and red, that feed the pump from the house. There is also a green ground wire. These wires are tie wrapped to the pump drop pipe. They are tie wrapped roughly every 10 feet to 3 meters to ensure the wiring does not wear from contact with the casing. The wiring connection at the top of the pump is pigtailed and the splice is heat shrunk in order to be waterproof. It's imperative we make a good strong waterproof connection between the pump and the control box. We use a shrink type connector which works very well for this situation. We bear our wires to the appropriate length. We insert or put on the plastic sleeve onto our wire and then we'll crimp the connector in place using the appropriate tools. From the pump side to the control box, from the pump side to the control box. Crimp that together. Make a good strong connection. Put our plastic sleeve over top of our connector, right in the middle. Then we use our heat source. In this case, we use a heat gun to shrink the plastic sleeve on our wire. This ensures a good, strong, waterproof connection. Now that we've discussed the plumbing and electrical of the submersible pump, let's try a little bit of troubleshooting. The following steps will illustrate how to check for a possible short in the pump motor or wiring.
step number one, turn off the master breaker or disconnect switch, which is the main power. Step number two, disconnect all the leads from this control box, or you can follow the conduit down to the pressure switch and disconnect the leads to the pressure switch. Step number three, connect an ohmmeter lead to any one of the motor leads. There you see the red lead tied to the yellow cable. Step number four, the other lead, which is the black lead, can be tied to the metal well casing or the ground wire as illustrated on this animation. Step number five, check your own reading. If it displays approximately 0 0.02 mega ohms, then the motor cable is damaged. The pump and cable should be pulled or repaired or replaced. If your own meter displays 0.5 to 2 mega ohms, then the motor is in reasonably good condition. If it displays higher than that, then it's in very good condition. Submersible pumps.